Hello. Today I'd like to talk with you about object permanence. Object permanence emerges in um, infancy, according to Piaget. As you're aware, Piaget's cognitive theory of development has four stages. And his first stage is the sensory motor stage. As it turns out, object permanence is a pretty big deal for little people. Around eight to 12 months of age, in Piaget's fourth substage, of his six substages in the sensory motor stage of development, uh, he claims that children develop object permanence. As you may already be aware, object permanence is when a child understands that something exists even when the child cannot see it anymore. So before object permanence, if you're playing with a child and you hide a toy behind a barrier, the child's attention will drift and they will not reach for the toy because as far as they're concerned, the toy doesn't exist. But once the child develops object permanence, they will be reaching for that toy, trying to reach around that barrier to get to the toy uh, that they are interested in. So why is object permanence important? Well, two reasons why it's important are that it is necessary for children to develop object permanence before they can develop uh, symbolic thought. And symbolic thought, or what Piaget calls symbolic capacity, allows us to learn language. But the second reason is because once a child acquires object permanence, they realize that their parents exist even when they're not in the child's presence. So this al allows a child eventually to experience and learn to deal with and eventually overcome separation anxiety. So let's talk about symbolic capacity first. If I were to say to you the word zebra, immediately a picture in your, in your mind of a zebra would uh, form. And you could also picture in your mind the word zebra. You could spell it out and see that word in your mind. And you know that uh, zebras exist even when you're not able to see them. I wouldn't have to bring a zebra into the room and show you a zebra for you to know what a zebra is. Words are symbols that stand for things. And we have images in our mind for these things and for actions as well that words stand for. And it's not possible for us to develop this symbolic capacity without understanding that things exist independent of our immediate experiencing of them. So that's the first important reason why the emergence of object permanence is so significant. Imagine what it would be like if uh, when you left home to go to college, you had to bring your mother with you to live with you in your dorm or an apartment because you never learned how to tolerate being away from her. Obviously, this is something that doesn't happen because we all develop that ability to um, eventually get to a place where we can tolerate being uh, separated from our parents. When we're infants, uh, we, we go through a period of separation anxiety when we experience some discomfort when we are separated from our parents because we realize that our parents exist even when we're not with them. So this object permanence for our parents makes this possible. 
a young child who has a secure attachment to his uh, or her parents uh, may experience some discomfort, but they're easily comforted when their parent returns. We'll be talking more about uh, the importance of attachment in another video. But these are a couple of the reasons why object permanence is so important. And I would encourage you, if you ever are around a young child, if you have the opportunity, you can um, do a little mini experiment and you can see whether that child has object permanence yet or not. Now, Piaget believed that object permanence emerges between around 8 and 12 months of age, as I said earlier. But research uh, conducted later has determined that object permanence probably emerges at an even younger age than Piaget originally thought because researchers have been able to use more sophisticated research methods to try to make that determination. Well, that's all for now. I look forward to talking with you again soon.